the Academy of Applied Biofunctional Science uh, that is uh, having Mark Richard Miller as the president. It is not a coincidence that I'm speaking to you about that right now because Mark Richard Miller is our next teacher. He is directly in line from Texas. He was having another lecture today in Texas, but he was taking the time to be able to speak to you. I think that uh, we are going to show you, you yeah, the title of his lecture. Mark is a wonderful person doing so much for my functional science and my functional therapy all over the world. He will speak to you about the disruptive force bringing change to medicine, to medicine. That is my functional therapy. I cannot introduce him in any better way than just telling you what he was doing. I was meeting him first at the Nifuna Congress. Finally, we are closing the loop uh, with the beginning of our Congress. We're discussing, exchanging about all the myofunctional therapy aspects, all the different fields that can be touched by myofunctional therapy. As the son of an orthodontist, I was finally focusing a little bit at the beginning on the orthodontic aspects, thinking that orthodontics was the main field where my functional therapy could be applied. I have to say that was at the very, very beginning because I quickly understood how wide we can, how much uh, the impact can be wide. And one of the person that was really helping me to understand that by showing me lectures, by showing me articles, it is Mark Richard Muller that is right now in a few seconds joining me in the screen. Finally, I have no better way to introduce you than telling you that the airport of what of Houston or Dallas. We will see that. But finally, I have no better way to introduce you, Mark, than by quoting yourself your favorite sentence that I was hearing so much and that I agree so much with: changing the world with style. Mark, it's your turn to speak to us. Okay, so uh, decode the silos, change medicine, change the world. We are at an inflection point, not only in medicine, not only in terms of approaching orthodontic treatment, approaching myofunctional disorders, we're at an inflection point for the world. The state of the world is in flux. We really need to think about what is the order of things. And froggies, as you can see, there are froggies on my tie, you can see, they are threatened. There are snakes everywhere. You see the snake wrapping around my neck. He's trying to get the froggies. We must protect the froggies. We must help children breathe. The fact that 2 billion people suffer from sleep disorder breathing, 1 billion with obstructive sleep apnea and advanced disease state, and that there's nothing being done about it in terms of public health is an outrageous scandal. We have to do something around the world. So we have to change medicine. This inflection point, you can see this is a turning point. We're at a turning point in sleep medicine. It's going to be a revolution. And froggy mouth is leading the charge. We must protect the frogs in the environment. If you look across the world right now, if you're in the Northern hemisphere, there's a storm of pollen everywhere. People's eyes are red. That's because the birds are being killed. Why? Because they're not getting insects and the street lights, the street lights are driving the insects away. So the precious frogs are an endangered species. We must fight for the frogs. So here we're going to go. I'm going to give a little quick overview. This is a uh, part of uh, my symposium at the World Sleep Congress. At the World Sleep Congress in Rome, two months ago, after over 1,200 presentations, uh, I, I started counting after 100 of them were directly reflecting our work, citing our work in myofunctional therapy. I was just like, okay, it's liftoff. Finally, we're at an inflection point. We're ready to go. You know, we uh, had a two-day featured symposium. Uh, we had another one. Uh, it's really quite profound, the work that's coming out. Things that we started back in 2013 with Horizon 2020, uh, cost actions. That's the consortium on science and technology. Uh, we had a profound section. Winfred Randrath uh, is down here as one of the two PIs. You see this consensus statement. I'll make this available to all of uh, the attendees. We can push out this in English and in French. 
a consensus statement on the orofacial myofunctional assessment and therapy in patients with obstructive sleep apnea, a proposal of an international Delphi method process. We've been doing work behind the scenes for over 10 years to bring in some of the best and brightest in sleep medicine, in dentistry, otolaryngology. Um, you can see uh, some of the, the speakers here today were, uh, were uh, there, Karen Sproit, um, certainly with INSERM, really in charge of pediatric sleep and uh, public health for, for uh, children, as it's related to sleep for France. Um, the wonderful Samantha Weaver, who you all saw her amazing presentation, but also uh, Mary Krieger, who edits the principles and practices of sleep medicine, just out with its seventh edition. Extraordinary gentleman, a real mentor for me. Um, I spoke at the uh, Yale, the seventh uh, annual Yale Featured Sleep Research Symposium uh, with the Yale School of Medicine and the Yale School of Nursing on April 29th. And I was given the slot right after Mayor Krieger, who's becoming an emeritus professor. He had a keynote and was given an atlas of the world and uh, talked about myofunctional therapy. And he's like, go out and going to see the world and we're going to change the world. And then I was introduced as his protege and I gave a presentation, the head of epidemiology uh, from the Yale School of Public Health, who I'm her intern, um, was there, uh, stood up, applauded, and uh, the department chair of sleep medicine. I was just like so scared to give my first presentation at the Yale School of Medicine. I'm attached, you know, a little bit there and with the School of Nursing because pediatric sleep is in the School of Nursing. And I'm going to be a student again, believe it or not, at the Yale School of Public Health. I started early with two internships, uh, but my MPH program, uh, which is executive, which it's a special program where I can travel, uh, starts at the end of June. But Mayor Krieger, Winfred Randrath, Winfred Randrath is the editor of the Journal of Sleep Medicine. We've been in touch for years. He wants to do a series of special issues of the Journal of Sleep Medicine on myofunctional therapy. I don't know if people realize the proportions of this, um, but uh, anyway, to go back to our presentation at the World Sleep Congress, you can see this, uh, Luca Roberti, Patient Voices and the Urgency of Myofunctional Therapy Accessibility. Okay, this is Sunday, the 13th of March. The next one, research priorities for myofunctional therapy, pulmonology, and the European Respiratory Society Obstructive Sleep Apnea Standards of Care, Winfried Randerath. Winfried Randerath in Cologne, Germany, not only uh, is a leading sleep specialist, but he heads the task force for obstructive sleep apnea for the European Respiratory Society and the European Life Foundation, the preeminent medical society in Europe, and uh, a very driven patient-centric foundation attached to it, which is in Lausanne, Switzerland. Luke Roberti, my good friend and colleague, uh, I first met when I was invited into the Italian Senate for a special sleep apnea symposium five years ago in Rome. And he started a patient advocacy society for patients with sleep apnea who are suffering. What can we do to help them? Anyway, Lucas moved up, he's head of a consortium of all of these societies for all of Europe. And Winfred Randerath represents the European Respiratory Society and the European Life Foundation. They came together and I'm working with both of them coincidentally, or maybe you know, fortuitously uh, with our focus here to help people. And they came to me and they asked me to produce public service announcements, uh, short films, social media bundles and um, interviews uh, around the question of, and, and release this in 10 countries, 10 countries due by March of next year in preparation in advance for the sleep and breathing conference of the European Respiratory Society combined with the European Sleep Research Society uh, at the end of April in Prague. And so anyway, this will be uh, just a, an explosive opportunity. They have a lot of money for financing, connections with all the ministries of health, all of the leading institutions. And you want me to answer three questions with this project. 
What is obstructive sleep apnea? What's the structure? How does it come about? What's the origin? Where does it come from originally at birth, mouth breathing, tongue tie? Two, what is myofunctional therapy and why is it important in relation to sleep apnea? Hello? Yes, this is, this is our time. This is the inflection point. And then the third thing, what is the importance of this, these two areas? How important is it for public health in general, for the world? for the country, for each country. Now we're up to 15 countries just in the last two months. We have the United Kingdom, France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Norway, Sweden, Iceland, Estonia, Belgium, Germany, Austria. I think Greece will come on board. I think Finland will. It's blowing up, it's taking off. So here is a study uh, that we're a central part of. This came out of a meeting where Harold Hubostrong crashed a, a research consortium that I was launching at the World Sleep Congress in Vancouver in 2019. He's like, what can we do, Mark? What can we do, Mark? So I said, well, you know, Horizon 2020, there's a, a great fund for disruption. We're a favorite there. We've been attached to four actions. Here we go, sleep revolution. State-of-the-art treatment for obstructive sleep apnea. This got 15 million euros. It's just getting started. We had an assembly at the World Sleep Congress in Rome with 75 people in it. There are 37 sites, you know, not just in Europe, but also Australia. You know, it's uh, about, uh, you know, myofunctional therapy is a core component of it. It's not the only piece, but we're a uh, working group, I think five and 10. Um, it's really exciting. So uh, Samantha, is the consultant on myofunctional therapy instruction. Um, and we are uh, the consultants, you know, we are driving this. This is uh, Shin Feng. She's uh, an amazing, uh, you know, doctor specializing in looking at the airway. Uh, we're looking at doing the first properly designed prospective study with randomization for myofunctional therapy. You know, we're moving forward. I can go into any detail with anyone out there who wants to learn more about this. Because uh, as a side note, we have a consortium of leading universities around the world where we're going to be doing large scale randomized controlled trials, which will help us move into the first tier of medicine and be accepted as standards of care. So here's a pilot, here's a second pilot, um, you know, here's uh, another presentation that was, you know, fantastic. Carol gave. Um, anyway, we're, we're just kind of blowing up. Look at all these institutions. There's so many we're going forward. Katrina Rogers uh, is one of our AOMT faculty. She's in the UK. She won a prize from a Queen's charity, the Winston Churchill Memorial Trust. I'm invited with her to the House of Lords in the UK in June because this is considered something significant for the future of the United Kingdom. So, you know, she looks at the pharynx. I mean, we know all of these things. I mean, you people know this, you people are involved, but you know now that there's going to be such a great opportunity to grow knowledge, to grow awareness, that it will drive awareness and we get more froggies out in the marketplace. We need to save the world. We have to get the froggies out there. We have to protect the froggies. We have to protect the babies, protect the adults. We have to protect the world because these kind of compromised airways, we should not be seeing patients. We know we can prevent them. So uh, I'll just leave with one last slide here. Um, I am so happy to be affiliated with Yale School of Public Health and Yale University, uh, you know, it, be engaged with the School of Medicine, um, the school management, and uh, there's uh, just incredible work, the School of Nursing. So there's a happy initiative, uh, which is about telling stories about science through art, through music. And I'm so happy to be interning. This is headed up by the chief epidemiologist, Judith Lutman. She's brilliant. She's world famous. And this is, you know, part of her programming, you know, so I'm excited to tell the world the story about how to save froggies. You know, I love Paris. I was so happy to visit our office in Paris. You know, je t'adore Paris, je t'adore la France, vive la France. So we have to save the world. 
Save the froggies. Oniva. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mark, for uh, this wonderful lecture and the little hints that I, of course, can uh, only uh, appreciate. I think it's a good way here to uh, we speak. We were speaking earlier about the AUMT as the Frogmo distributor <clears throat> when we were also having the lecture of Samantha. And there is the AUMT, Academy of Orofacial uh, Myofunctional Therapy, uh, and the AMS, Academy, uh, Academy of Applied Myofunctional Sciences. Uh, both are doing different stuff. AMS is their nonprofit society, the scientific society organizing worldwide research and also future congress that uh, they can find on your website while the AMT is organizing classes and selling different devices, including the Froggy Mouth. Thank you very much. Uh, Mark, for uh, this lecture. I know that you have a plane to catch and a lot of lectures to do. I really appreciate that you could find little minutes in your super busy schedule uh, to connect uh, with us. I know how busy you are. It was a pleasure to have you at our office in Paris a few uh, days ago. And I know uh, also um, people, are, yeah, people have been seeing you. I, I see that you are having the camera uh, activated. So it was a pleasure, yeah. Mark. Yeah. Uh, just uh, two, two final words. The Academy of Applied Myofunctional Sciences is a nonprofit based in the United States. It has helped start 24 nonprofit scientific societies around the world. So if your, company, if your country does not have representation, I want you to help, uh, help uh, yourselves and I'll help organize. We can help start societies. Furthermore, um, we have other uh, projects in the works, um, you know, for the, the next Congress, it will be virtual, the sixth AMS Congress, but save the dates for uh, September 6th to 13th. We'll have a, our, our first live Congress in a while in Rio de Janeiro. We'll have in conjunction with the World Sleep Congress, uh, Rio, de de Janeiro, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Uh, so it will be fantastic. Uh, please save the dates. And I, I will be giving a, uh, research symposium, uh, uh, organ chairing a research symposium at Yale on the 19th and 20th. I'm glad uh, Dr. Patrick Fellis will be coming over uh, to Yale University for that, for uh, a featured slot in that. But uh, we'll find some way to help uh, distribute that uh, to the viewers as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's so great, Mark. I know, can you show the previous one? Uh, that's so great, uh, uh, Mark, that you are uh, organizing. Uh, uh, all of that, all those lectures in uh, Yale universities, also uh, the uh, AMS online congress. We all remember the success of the previous online congress that we are organizing uh, last summer over a full month. Uh, I think that uh, everybody can find uh, all the information about the next uh, AMS congress on the booth that the AMS is having on the uh, exhibit hall. Uh, the exhibit hall are uh, speaking once again about it, where you will find the booth of all the local distributors, the AMS, the AOMT, and also all the scientific societies that uh, are helping us to organize that. The SFOP, the French Pediatric Orthodontic Society, the Japan Oral uh, Society, the IFUNA Society that we were seeing a little bit uh, before. Uh, all the societies that I really advise you to check out what they do, each societies is having wonderful lectures, wonderful people trying to change the world, as Mark is always saying, to change the world with style. And really, that's so wonderful that we can be all working together on the same direction. I think that my functional sciences deserve this common effort of all the people. I would have said believing in that, but I think that believing in that is not strong enough. It's more like knowing the importance of the myofunctional sciences in general, that all those people can build a strength together, build a worldwide momentum. And we are so glad to be part of that and to be associated with all those wonderful scientific societies all over the world. Thank you very much, Mark. 